after morning work's done, it all boils down to the numbers and the luck of the draw. But in terms of the post positions, there really weren't very many surprises. Yes. Why 12? Right in the middle, right where we wanted to be. Why is that best for your horse, you think? Well, I tell you what, Julian uh, has ridden many races, and he's ridden in the past two derbies, and he thought he would be uh, it would be very productive to be right in the middle of the field where he can watch the inside, the outside, and see where the speed is and see how the race is setting up. It's going to set up very quickly as they go into that first turn, so you have to make a, a, a very quick judgment of where you want to be because if you get caught in that first turn or you get swung out wide, uh, you're going to lose ground. That's what we didn't want to do. We think we will uh, be right there going into the first turn. Hopefully, maybe three, four, or five. Rick, uh, what do you think of your position and how it all worked out? You know, I think we uh, we had talked it over, you know, considering we were going to be in the uh, the 11th pick, and, uh, you know, I, I don't think we could have done much better from where we are. We're, uh, we're very happy with the six. We got no speed inside of us, but, you know, I think the speed is all right, right outside of us. They'll go, and hopefully we'll be in behind them. After uh, finishing second, do you think this is the time you're going to win it? I sure hope so. Uh, it, I think it's on paper. I think this is our best chance that we've had looking at the race, handicapping the race uh, of the last, you know, of the, the three races: hard spun, eight bells, and uh, Friesen. Best thing about Friesen Fire is, I think, I think that he's on the improve. Uh, and he's got the pedigree to go a mile and a quarter. For sure. You know, hopefully you draw outside and your horse leaves the gate good and you get a good trip into the first turn and that'll tell you whether how good a trip you're going to have. you feel Bob is the right trainer to have to strategize at that moment? Oh, definitely. I mean, he's been here a bunch of times. He's winning a bunch of times. So, you know, uh, he's been through this and, uh, you know, it helps to be uh, with somebody that's been through it quite a bit. So tell me about Pioneer and the Nile on dirt. How do you think the horse likes the track? Um, so far, so good. Uh, what I've heard, you know, the way he's breezed, um, everything looks perfect. Um, you know, I mean, he's taken to it really good, and, you know, he's bred for it, so uh, I'm not too worried about it. This is probably a silly question, but I would think your son, he'll remember that. I would think that'd be a pretty cool thrill. You know, it's funny, uh, when I brought him here, I, I had him look at all the numbers. I said, what number? I, I was thinking of two numbers, number 10 and 16. So he went through all the numbers before, and he, he picked 10. And uh, but 10 was already gone. So uh, and I've been thinking 16 all week. You know, I've been I've been studying this horse, his style of running. He's not a speed horse, so I wanted him on the outside, I'm trying to keep him out of as much traffic as possible. And so uh, I, I think it's a good spot. I think there was no really big surprises. Speed horses uh, were down the inside where they should be, and uh, so our style of running is, is to come off the pace. So I wanted to put him in a spot where I felt comfortable where. In case he does break a little slow or something, at least he's got, he's not going to be banged around on the inside. Pioneer and I'll spend a lot of time now on the dirt. I hear you're very happy with the change. Yes, he, he's handling very well. You know, he's never had dirt kicked in his face. You know, that's the only thing that he hasn't done. Uh, so, uh, but, you know, he'll probably get a good dose of it on uh, Saturday. But that's something that, he, he's a very uh, intelligent horse. He's very tough. He's gritty. He has a lot of heart. He's shown us that. So, the, the it's very competitive, so I'm not worried about that. So, uh, so you know, uh, I'm, I'm not surprised that it's one of the favorites. But... Why? Just curious. Why closer to the outside and a little bit closer in? Uh, I just think there's less traffic out there, better chance of being able to fall into a, a better position from there as opposed to the inside. Doug, you talked about Nutford. What have you seen of leading up to now that, that keeps you believing now? Well, just the, the way the horse trains, the mechanics of his, the way he moves. He's had two mile and an eighth races. You know, he's shown stamina in all three of his starts, especially the two mile and an eighth races. So it's just, you know, that's what he's bred to do. Ty, you feel like different going into this race than you had in the previous? He's trying to buck a lot of his, historical trends, but, uh, you know, we feel like he might be the one that can, that can step up and overcome that. Uh, speed horses right there together. Is that anything? I mean, you know what? I mean, I think most of the speed horses are going to find each other pretty early anyway. So I don't. I don't think it really matters. But um, 
was interesting that they're, you know, the two most likely pace setters are side by side. What about the pace of this race? I mean, well, I mean, I, I think with joining the dance and Regal Ransom in there, they'll ensure a good, honest pace. It might not be the blistering uh, Balto Star song and a prayer type pace, but it's going to be solid. What kind of a trip do you hope for from Don Cook? Ideally, I would love for him to fall into a nice spot where he's not surrounded by a lot of traffic mid division find his comfort zone, get into a rhythm, and just have a you know smooth trip. Does he have any, any idiosyncrasies, or what kind of a horse does he ride? Very straightforward. Yeah.